If you're having trouble adding a soft blush to your character in watercolor, then this video is for you. The technique we're going to use is wet and wet. I'll first explain the technique, show you how it's done in a painting, and share with you some tips. So after this video, with some practice, you'll be able to do it easily in your painting as well. If you're not familiar with the wet and wet technique, let me quickly show you. So wet and wet is one of the most basic technique in watercolor. Basically, you're painting with a wet brush on wet paper. In contrast, there is also wet on dry. You can probably guess what that means, but that's a topic for another day. Um, so to do wet and wet, um, you basically wet the paper first, either with water or paint. You can probably see the reflection now. It's pretty wet, this whole area. Then I'm going to load my brush with some paint and paint in here. So you can see the paint just disperse really quickly in the water. And the flow rate depends on how wet your paper is and how much paint on your brush. We can also try to wet the paper first with some paint and use another color to paint in there. So I put on some light blue on the paper while it's still wet. You can see the sheen. I'm going to grab some, some yellow and just paint in here. You can see there's no defined lines for the yellow that I just put in. If I put it on the dry paper, it does have really sharp edges. So in a very simple way, this is wet and wet. As you can probably guess, this is really famous for creating happy accidents because it's not very controllable because of these furry edges and how the paint flow in the wet area. But we're going to control it so it's perfect size and perfect shape for the blush while maintaining the soft edge. So let me show you how to do that. First, we wet the paper with clean water and you can probably see the sheen. This much of sheen is too wet. So with this much of sheen means there's still a lot of water on the surface of the paper. Then if you put in any paint, it's gonna just disperse like this. So we wanna observe and let the sheen go down a bit before we drop any paint in there. While I'm waiting for the sheen to go down a bit, I can go mix the blush color. For anime characters, Usually my favorite color is some sort of coral or light pink. So for this one, let's try a light, just any light red. I'm just picking a whatever red here with quite a bit of water. I'm testing it out on the paper. I'm adding a little bit orange to make it a little bit warmer. So that's pretty good. You want to add enough water so it's a very light pink. Now the sheen has gone down quite a bit, it's the time to put in the color. But before you put in the color, rinse the brush, make sure it's clean, and then dry it on a paper towel. You don't want it to be super dry, but you just want to touch it and let it soak up the extra water on there. So once you soak it up, dip it into the blush color, pick up a little bit, and let's try to put it in here. If there's not enough color, just grab a little bit more. Now you can see it's a really nice and soft diffused color instead of this crazy pattern dispersing everywhere. This color looks a little bit too light, so I'm going to mix it in a little bit more red to make it a little bit stronger. Test it out. It looks pretty strong here, but once it disperses in the water, it'll be lighter. And watercolor always dry lighter so that should be a better color to use. But remember to dry your brush every time before you pick up the blush color. Now the paper has dried a little bit too much, so there's not as much dispersion as the first area, but we still have this diffused edge, so this is how you get a control of the shape now I've been talking too much. I think the paper is too dry. So let's try another area. So you can probably tell now if the water is dried too much, you're going to have a hard edge. But if you put it in fresh water like this, it's gonna disperse too much. So what you're looking to do is basically find the right time to put in the blush color. 
Another thing I want to show you before we start the painting is how to create a combination of soft and hard edges in Wet n Wet. So let's say I wet this area. I'm going to draw an edge using this pencil. So basically somewhere here. So you can see it very clearly. So now I'm going to paint in this area. I'm using a stronger color so it's easier to see. So basically the paint is going to stop wherever there's no water. So it's going to stop where the water meets the dry paper, creating the hard edge. And then it's going to flow towards wherever there is water. So if I paint at the edge of this box, I'm going to get a hard edge. And if I'm going to paint in the center of the box, I get soft edges all around. So how is this relevant to the blush? Um, for anime girls, we have a specific area that on the cheek that we want to apply the blush. So let me quickly draw a demo here. So let's say we have this happy character. The blush area we want to do is basically under her eye from here and then soft edge over here. So basically under the eye over here, we want to do a hard edge over here and then soft edge over here. So if we put on water in this area, oops, my water is a bit pink. Let me get some clean water. So if we put on the water over here. We want to make sure the water stops at the bottom of her eye. So now this area is wet. I'm going to put in some blush color. When I put it in, I'm going to start from the top and then let it slightly run down a bit, creating the soft edge. And if you're not happy with the shape, rinse your brush and dry it on the paper towel. And then you can go over the edge. So it pick up some excess color and gives you a softer edge. So let's now try it on your. And then at the same time, I'm going to show you some tips and troubleshooting if you run into any issues. This painting is pretty much finished. The only thing missing is the blush. I picked your because she's one of the perfect character for blushing. And if you Google, there's tons of pictures of her blushing in different expressions. So I got a reference photo here for us to look at. Process wise, the easiest way to add blush is to finish painting the skin first, let it dry, then add blush color on top. Then after you add the blush, you can let it dry and finish off the rest of the painting. I finished the whole painting because it's easier to see in the video. But if you're worried about having the blush touching the darker area like the hair, um, so the color run into each other and dirty the blush, then you should totally leave the hair, leave the darker color to a later stage. Because um, in watercolor, to keep the painting clean, usually the general rule of thumb is to go from lightest color to darkest color. But for today, I painted the line art using India ink, so it won't be reactivated by water. Well, that's one of the tips you can do so that your painting doesn't get dirty. So following the practice we did before, first I'm wetting my brush with clean water and I'm going to wet the area under her eyes. So I'm being very careful not to get any water into the white area of her eyes. So from the reference photo, we can see the blush is somewhere around here, right under the eye. It goes a little bit towards this side and this side, but not too much. But the area we want to wet is bigger than that. So we have some room for the soft edge to form. So I wet this whole area. It doesn't matter if you wet too much, uh, too big of an area, but it would be a problem if you do too small of an area because the hard edge will form in that small circle. Now the sheen has gone down a bit. I cleaned my brush and dried it on a paper towel. And I picked up a little bit of the blush color. First test it out. Looks about right. And then I'm going to drop it in. Starting from the top.
you don't want to go too close to the edges because it might get to the edge and then form a hard edge. Now the paper is probably still a little bit too wet because I didn't wait long enough for the sheen to go down, but that's okay. One way to fix this is to clean your brush, dry it on the paper towel, and then go over the edges and your brush will just be able to pick it up. So now you have a really nice soft blush, but be careful not to go back into this area too much because the water on your brush could run into this area or you can accidentally do a lift so it will ruin this uniform wash that you just created. So let's try it on the other side and then I can show you some more tips. Check the color. Now the sheen has gone down a bit, I'm going to put in the color. For this side, I think the color is a little bit too light, so I'm adding a stronger color on this side. So now I want to show you what happens if you find your blush color is too light. For example, this side. Usually, you rather err on the lighter side than the darker side, because if it's too light, you can easily add another glazing layer on top. So that's what we can do on this side. But before you glaze, you have to make sure this bottom layer is completely dry. Otherwise, it's gonna reactivate some of the paint underneath, disturbing the paint on the paper. Then it's gonna make it look uneven. So I'm going to wet this area again. Make sure I follow exact the same hard edge for the top portion. And then dry my brush a bit, pick up some blush color, and then drop it in. Usually the blush color is the strongest close to the bottom of the eye. It's very gradual. The difference is not very noticeable, but if there is a graduation, the top color should be darker. Also, I noticed on this side, the blush area is much bigger. So I want to make this side a little bigger to match. So this is where when I can fix it as well. When you're more familiar with this technique, you can do both sides at the same time. Then that's probably the most easy way to make it even and symmetrical. Soften the edges a little bit with a clean, damp brush. All right, I think these are pretty symmetrical right now. I'm just gonna let it dry. Now both sides has dried. I think it's pretty symmetrical and pretty even. Now I have one last tip for you. Depends on what kind of art style you're looking for. If you want the more two-dimensional anime illustration or manga kind of style, you could totally add those blush lines. But I wouldn't recommend using black because it looks kind of jarring because the watercolor naturally has a softer look. So I would use a red color that is a little bit stronger than the blush. So if you're using a certain red to mix with water to make a blush color, just pick up this red and mix it with a little bit less water to make a stronger version of it and use that to add the blush lines. So let's try it out. So this was the red I used. I'm going to put a little bit here. I also added a little bit of orange in there to make it a little bit warmer. And then I'm going to add just a little bit water to make a stronger version. Also, we're just drawing the lines on the dry area. So this area is all dry. The color will be stronger than painting in wet area. So let's try it out. So on this little face, it'll be something like this. Just a few lines like this. So for this brush stroke to work, you probably want to use a really tapered brush like this. So this brush has a, just only a few hair at the tip, so I can draw really, really thin lines. You wouldn't want something like this because it doesn't have a really fine tip and your line will be way too thick for the blush line. Okay, so let me add the lines. All right, looking good. All right, so that was the technique for adding a soft blush to your character. It is a simple and straightforward technique, but does require quite a bit of practice. But once you get a hand of it, I'm sure you'll be able to add it all the time perfectly to your character. If you're not sure about what color to use for the skin, for the shadow, for the blush, check out my video here.